Hello YouTubers, fellow hams and electronics enthusiasts. Got a little repair job to do that should be a simple job. <laughs> should be. This is one of the early Apple iBook uh, clamshell laptops. Given its name obviously from the fairly radical case design that resembles a clam. Um, problem with this one is it will not charge or maintain power. And uh, the charger itself, which is here, is okay. I've uh, tested that. Uh, the problem is the connector on the computer. Now, if we look over here on the side, right there, we have a, what looks like, at a first glance, looks like an RCA uh, connector. But it's actually sort of a hybrid RCA style shell with an eighth inch uh, tip ring sleeve um, internal part so um, but this connector is loose I can I can wiggle it around a little bit you know so that's a I've seen those types of problems before uh, with power connectors that are mounted to the PC board and held in place with just solder connections right the pins come through the PC board and soldered in and that's all that holds the connector in place and especially on a power connector where you've got a plug sticking out of there and it's getting wiggled around every time you plug it in. Uh, something can get can bump it, you know. Those solder connections crack and come loose. So this should be a fairly simple repair. Uh, take the computer apart, get to the power connector, re-solder the connections, maybe uh, <clears throat> put a little bitty dab of epoxy um, there to really secure it to the board so it doesn't wiggle around and break in the future. Should be. Should be. <laughs> Um, I've never had one of these apart, uh, so I went uh, went looking around, and uh, the 8-bit guy, who used to call himself the iBook guy, uh, is a YouTube channel that's mostly retro computers nowadays. It's a, it's a fun channel. I watch it pretty regularly. Um, fortunately, he used to do a lot of um, upgrades and repairs on these, and he has a nice step-by-step -step video on disassembly of this machine which is fantastic because there's going to be about 20 or so screws that I have to take out and most of them are different sizes, lengths, and types. <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare the way this thing's put together. Now I'm not going to film myself um, doing the disassembly because it's going to be long and tedious and it's just going to be, well, it's, it's very, very well covered in the 8-bit guy's video. So what I will do is down below in the video description, I will put a link to his disassembly video so that you can go and you can watch that if you want to see the steps for disassembling this down to the point where I can get to the power connector. Um, what I'm going to do is go through that. I'm going, to, I'm going to follow his video and get the disassembly done to where I'm down to the power connector. Then I'll bring you back on the camera and we'll have a close look at the power connector, um, where the problem is on the board, uh, what we do to correct that problem, and then I'll put it all back together and we'll test it out. So I'm gonna get started and uh, we're gonna get this iBook apart. One little hint, um, I did mention this is gonna have a whole bunch of screws that are all different types and styles. I have one of these parts boxes here that has multiple little dividers in there. And uh, I've numbered each of these, one, two, three, four, five, six and then so on up to 23 and I use this precisely for these types of things where I'm going to have several different types of screws or parts during a disassembly what I'll do is I'll take a notepad and uh, I've written one on here um, and what I'm going to do is as I remove each of the different types of screws um, they're going to go in their own compartment and I'm going to note on the pad um, number one is the bottom case screws and any specific notes um, that are important to how they went in or any details that are necessary for reassembly. So then as I'm reassembling the computer, I'll just go in reverse order and follow my notes um, to make sure I put it back together with all the right screws in the right places. So this is a good idea. Keep track of multiple types of screws and things 
when you're disassembling something like this this um, iBook or some complex piece of gear and you want to keep track of uh, where the screws go. So there a little hint for you. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I've got the connector out. Um, there's the old shield. There's the shield that was across the logic board. Uh, this has been horrible. Um, my notes on uh, where all the screws went and where they need to go in the reverse order, putting it back together. Uh, I have 16 notes, 16 slots in the screw cabinet. Um, crazy number of screws. This is the power connector board, which was sitting right there, tucked down in here. Getting it back in there is going to be kind of tricky. And looking at it, nearly every single connection has a cracked solder joint. There's two pins here and here that are both cracked, so they're intermittent. And when you flip it over and look at this side, I haven't lifted this test label yet to look, but there's a surface mount connection under there. There's a surface mount connection right there, and that one looks like it's still okay. And there's a surface mount connection here, which is also cracked. So uh, that's three of the four visible connections that are cracked. Let's lift that sticker and see if there's one under there as well. Yeah, there is. And it looks like it's still okay. So there's five total connections, three of which have... Uh, Crack solder joints. So I'm going to have to heat the soldering iron up and re-solder re these. Uh, but first I'm going to get my little USB, um, this little webcam that I bought to try to use on the 3D printer that turned out to have too narrow of a field of view. Uh, had a focus ring that could be cranked way in and turned out to have absolutely incredible macro photography capabilities. So I'm going to take some pictures of these cracked solder joints and I'll put them up on the screen here. Um, there'll be a picture of the cracked solder joint surface mount one on the top and then the two uh, grounding tabs on the bottom which are both cracked. Uh, we'll have a close-up of that. So that is that. Time to heat up the soldering iron and fix these connections. All right, the power connector has been re-soldered. We have good connections all around, especially on those ground tabs that were loose. And that should be nice and firm. So I think I'll uh, go through and do the reassembly, which is going to be doing a whole bunch of steps in reverse. And uh, we'll see if it powers up. So, see you again in about uh, 20 minutes. Oh boy, that was not fun. There's all my notes. <laughs> 16 of them, detailed notes on assembly and disassembly. This thing is crazy to take apart. Holy cow. Got it all back together. No leftover screws. The only thing I did not do is I did not try to glue the bezel back on. Um, the tabs have broken. There's like three would have been three tabs on here that have broken. I would have to glue this to the face of the actual CD-ROM tray. Uh, and there's little buttons and mechanical assemblies along there, and I was just not confident of keeping the glue from seeping into those assemblies. So I don't think the owner's going to be that upset. I mean, I haven't seen one of these clamshells that still has this intact, except maybe in the computer museum. <laughs> so. I'm just going to explain to him that I didn't want to risk destroying uh, the mechanical assemblies in his CD-ROM drive by gluing this on. You can still access the CD-ROM. You can eject it using the keyboard. It still works, or should work. So anyway, we're ready to power up. I've plugged in the power, got the power adapter connected. No smoke. That's good. Let's, uh, oh, I hate this part. Let's hit the power button and see what happens. I hear a hard drive. Ah, I hear a startup chime. Do we get a screen? Do we get a screen? Yes. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It just lit up. It's got that little uh, every other pixel pattern that the early Macs had. There's a mouse pointer. Hey, there's a smiley Mac. I don't know if that's showing up on camera or not. Backlight is not all that bright. 
But, you know, that's not really surprising considering it's a fluorescent backlight on a computer that's, what, 15 years old? Something like that? I'm sure you can see that. Mac OS 9. Okay, trackpads work and I can move the mouse pointer around. We're going to have to see if we can click on something and then uh, we'll have to see if the keyboard works. Uh, we'll just do a new document. I guess that was a blank. Word processing, sure. I just want to see if the keyboard works. Obviously the trackpad is working. Yep. Now, it's kind of hard to type from an angle when I'm trying to stay out of the camera shot. Yeah, okay. Quit. Don't save. Special shutdown. All right, so power problem resolved. It should be as uh, strong, if not a little stronger than it was new, and it should probably last him another uh, 15 years if the if the computer lasts that long. I'm pretty sure the hard drive is probably going to go eventually. <laughs> Surprised it's actually running, but hey, there you go. There we go, another successful repair on the uh, old tech guy bench. All right, back to radio stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.